Uh, so this is about uh, virtualization, my recommendation report. According to the, to the requirement, I'm supposed to, uh, the presentation should be about the option that I used, that I choose, which is Hyper-V option I choose. Uh, during the presentation, if there is anybody who want, would like to interrupt, ask questions, I'll be happy to oblige. So, so virtual, virtualization solution. The actual problem, the GLOS Enterprise, we know that it's an information technology company, began in 2004. They're offering IT network consultancy service for small, medium-sized business. But three years ago, the company added services for the design and development of websites, multimedia products, and customized applications. Uh, the structure of the company, they have uh, uh, four departments, development, multimedia production sales, and marketing, human resources, IT support and accounts. Up to date, they are employing 40 uh, employee, and they also uh, contract 20 uh, uh, staffs. Uh, it's just worth mentioning here that uh, this uh, proposal uh, for 40 uh, staff, so the virtualization should be able to support, I mean, the server should be able to support at least 40 users. And the 20 additional ones should also be put into consideration. To continue, to stay ahead of their competition, Julos Enterprise has decided to establish a new research department to design new products and improvement existing. When, whenever you have a design department and uh, research, that's most likely like uh, artificial intelligence requirement for uh, for for virtualization for uh, calculation for, for utilizing so move on they also have uh, they are also looking forward to uh, expand their sales footprint and uh, they are considering opening a sales office in Perth which means there is another branch away from Sydney their headquarters in Sydney and in Perth, uh, for this, for my solution, Perth will be able to, they, I think they're, they're, they're really having like three salespeople there. So that will be like virtual disk. Uh, I'll, I'll be use, they'll be using virtual disk uh, access to the, to the server at the uh, Sydney office. Now, to support this department and sales, the following service, that's the requirement of the uh, servers, a DNS, a secondary DNS, a SQL, a file server, and a print server. Management are interested uh, uh, because their sales grow growing by 15%. And uh, initially, the Perth office will, will step, as, as I said before, three sales representatives and an office assistant and will not have any local technical support. So that's why when they are in the virtual server, uh, IT can support them too, because they have, they should have all the software running on in, in the Sydney uh, branch. Now, of course, we have to pay attention to the security and compliance, data protection, ensure the BDI solution adheres to data protection laws and regulation in Australia. The Privacy Act and, and notifiable data breaches scheme, implement inscription, access control, and regular backups to protect sensitive data. And the industry, industry standard align your BDI solution to the relevant industry standards, such as Australian Government Information Security Manual, ISM, and the Australian Signal uh, Di Director, Directorate ASD guidelines. There are guidelines there. These standards provide best practice for security system and data. The endpoint security implement robust endpoint security measurement, including firewall, antivirus software, intrusion detection, prevent, prevention systems, and regular security updates on virtual desktop. 
Now, to support 40 to 60 users, one of the requirements uh, support should be 80% utilization, which means that at, at any time, the server and this, the, the virtualization should be able to accommodate 80% utilization, as well as accommodate storage requirement for multimedia and meta, uh, metamedia data. And these are huge data, of course, and provide various service roles such as primary and secondary DNS, print the server, file server, and remote desktop service. So that all this has to be put in consideration. Oh, sorry, something missing here, but doesn't matter. High performance, uh, the, um, the hardware, um, you know, I, I did some Google, and I found that, uh, I'm not sure if I can control this. Oh, sorry. How can I go back to the previous? Yeah. The uh, I found the, the Intel Xeon. Many options here, and you can see the. Uh, I found that the requirement should be many cores. And uh, the Xeon can provide up to 56 cores, which makes speed faster. And uh, of course, you can see the prices are not bad, not that I can afford one. So a high performance processor with multi, multiple cores, such as Intel Xeon or AMD processor, memory RAM. Yeah, memory RAM for the server, you know, at least should be 200 gigabyte to support all these users for uh, yeah. Now server hardware confirmation, uh, configuration uh, storage we can use the uh, 12 to 16 drive base to accommodate SAS some kind of uh, uh, high storage uh, it's called SAS enterprise drives for multimedia and metamedia uh, data storage of course rate configurations for data redundancy and improvement performance uh, virtualization solution, uh, uh, of course, a good uh, graphic uh, card or, or hardware should also be thought of uh, for works as delivery performance, ensure it supports PCI IE3, 16, that's technical stuff. And so the, the motherboard should be able to support this. I think the Xeon should be able to support this kind of. Uh, servers because uh, GLOS department uh, where they have the the, um, the uh, multimedia they must they must be dealing with a lot of multimedia and they need good graphic cards uh, this is uh, this is a layout of the whole thing uh, I I actually did this in uh, Cisco Cisco uh, simulation. The whole idea is we have a server here and we have another backup server. And as you can see, when I did all the connections, it's actually all connected, so it is possible. And uh, these are the departments, IT support, human resources, uh, multimedia production, accounts, sales. Uh, and this is also the pending uh, the proposed uh, research department. They all connected through one server, which is uh, could be running uh, uh, Windows uh, 2000 and, uh, Server 2019. And at the same time, that server is uh, have many roles: uh, Active Directory, SQL File Server, Printer Server, Active Directory, Remote Desktop. Uh, and BDI. BDI is used, as you can see, through a modem, through the cloud, to the Perth branch. In the Perth branch, we can have uh, uh, staff accessing the server using the BDI. And uh, <clears throat> deployment configuration, I just thought maybe I should give an idea of how easy it is to, to do something like this. It's not uh, very hard. 
So we have we installed the server 2019, configured as domain controller and DNS server. We've done that many times actually. And install Windows Server 2019 and main server and configure it as a domain controller, uh, active directory domain. Install and configure the DNS server role on the same server and the same server. Ensure that DNS is properly configured and integrated with Active Directory domain. I set up uh, two virtual services server servers running city. Actually, that could be done separately with two different servers, or you can do it on the same server. The same server you can just install a role for uh, for Hyper B role on the main server that will be enabled virtualization. And the second one using Hyper V each running Windows Server uh, 2019 and assign adequate resources. Uh, you have full control here for the VDI. You can assign uh, like two, three, four processors uh, for each uh, virtual uh, drive for virtual disk and uh, enough memory probably 16 gig for each because your server has a lot of uh, should have a lot of uh, uh, ram to support all these users and this is just a presentation of how some things could look like uh, and then after that the main the main thing about uh, virtual disk uh, is uh, the Windows you are using should be the latest updated, and you have to create a template. To create a virtual machine on the Hyper-V server, install Windows 11, assume it's the latest, using ISO, and configure it according to your requirement. Install the necessary update patches, virtual machine to ensure it's up to date with the latest security updates, and then you have to uh, sysprep it uh, to uh, to generalize it because that's your template is going to be used to later on to uh, create as many uh, virtual uh, disk as you as you want or as you need for your for your staff and for your remote uh, users <laughs> okay now remote disk uh, service on one of the servers virtual machine installed the remote disk server role using server manager configure the RBS deployment according to your needs including the necessary license sessions host it sounds complicated but once you start doing it the uh, the windows installation has a lot of help uh, information which makes it easy to follow and uh, and to debug any problems uh, so it's not as hard as it see, as it looks like. Ensure that the RDS virtual machine has sufficient resources, CPU RAM to handle. That is, if you ha if you're using a, uh, a a virtual one, but if you're using the same server, you, you won't worry much about that. Okay, this is just part of the uh, installation deployment overview, and then. You, um, you implement the virtual desktop infrastructure VDI, installed and configured the VDI Microsoft uh, virtual desktop infrastructure on the on the other server, the 2019 virtual machine. Create Windows 11 VDI collection. They call it collection. Uh, one, two, three, twenty, thirty, maybe sixty for for, for what uh, for as many users as are going to be using the system uh, or pool within the VDI uh, solution and configure it to match the desired number of users, assign appropriate resources to each virtual uh, machine, like memory, how many CPUs, uh, stuff like that. Ensure that the VDI server has sufficient resources, as we said again. Okay, uh, in the future, one thing about this uh, Hyper-V VDI, uh, Oh, yeah, it's easily can migrate to the Amazon the AWS. Uh, Amazon EB EBS for persistent block storage or Amazon S3 for object storage. Consider the performance and capacity needs of your VDI environment when choosing the storage solution. 
virtual machine migration, that's a good feature on AWS. Convert your existing Hyper-V virtual machines after you create it and use it to AWS comparable format. This can be achieved using tools like AWS Server Migration Service, which support, actually supports Hyper-V migration, which is very good. Launch the migrated uh, virtual machine as Amazon EC2 instances with your VPC using appropriate instance types and configuration. Um, <clears throat> finally, the, we, we have to mention that all electric e-waste must be disposed of in an environmentally considerate manner. This, this was guidelines, general guidelines are that e-waste should be recycled whenever possible and must not be sent to landfill. The following components can be recycled by sending to or arranging pickup from a suitable recycling service, lithium bias batteries, uh, toner, cartridges, uh, monitors, printed circuit boards, redundant hardware. All ICT components that may include data of any kind must be satisfied before disposing of. Components may include hard drives, printers, network drives, monitors. This is, of course, extract from the ICT disposable and storage procedures in the GLOS, uh, in the GLOS uh, 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 templates.